juror on the, on the, jury, on the jury of the Tory Stafford murder trial says she has PTSD and is now seeking compensation. With all the details, let's go live to CP24's Carmen Wong. Carmen. And Nick, I want to welcome uh, here this morning uh, Dr. Caddy Kemkar uh, from CAMH. Welcome to the show this morning. Thank you. You're a clinical psychologist with CAMH. Yes. Um, and, you know, we were talking a bit about, oh, everyone knows about this Tory Stafford case. Um, we did not have to sit through a trial. This juror sat through a trial for two months, and she's saying she's suffering from vicarious post traumatic stress disorder. So, yes. what is that? You know, first of all, I think it's very important to understand the nature of uh, symptoms of post-traumatic stress because post-traumatic stress disorder can occur following exposure to actual or threatened death, serious injury or sexual violence. So for example, it can occur after we are directly experiencing traumatic event, witnessing traumatic event happening to others, or hearing that a traumatic event has occurred to a loved one or a close family member, or in this case here, it could be being repeatedly exposed or this intense exposure to details of traumatic event. So for example, we know that for police officers, um, it could be being repeatedly exposed to details of um, uh, child investigations and child abuse, or for first responders, it could be collecting human remains, and in this case, of course, being repeatedly exposed to details of a very severe traumatic event. Yeah, she said she was uh, exposed to uh, very graphic evidence, also brought to the place where um, this young girl's body uh, was found. So uh, feeling as though she experienced some of that herself. Um, she, what is the process for someone to to get well, to recover from, from an experience? Like well, this? you know, following traumatic events, we do, uh, it's very common to uh, experience um, some reactions. It could be distressing intrusive memories, nightmares, wanting to avoid any reminders um, any places or locations or any cues related to the traumatic event. We might experience a sense of emotional uh, disengagement, diminished interest in activities, or hypervigilance, being constantly on guard, having difficulty with our sleep and difficulty with our concentration. But what's important is that if we experience those symptoms increasingly over time to the point that they interfere with our functioning and responsibilities and daily activities, it's very important to seek help because otherwise they can increase our risk for developing symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. And we've just got a few seconds left. How, why is it that some people get so affected by it and other people can just compartmentalize and say, you know, it doesn't bother me? You, you know, obviously, like as, as, as in everything, there are significant individual differences, right? Um, so, you know, there are certain also factors prior, prior to traumatic events. So, for example, um, if we're struggling with some, a lot of stress or, or a lot of maybe it could be if um, we're suffering from depression or anxiety, or at times everything is fine, but then we are exposed to a very traumatic event, especially if it's the traumatic event is repeated exposure, then of course it can increase our risk uh, for, for the symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. So again, there are significant individual differences. Okay, Dr. Kemkar, thanks so much for joining us Thank this morning. Thank you very much.